Who here would like to have superpowers? I know I would. Well, unfortunately, we can't teleport you past the morning Toronto traffic to your work in the morning. We would like to show you a brief glimpse a little later in the presentation on how we're trying to give people superpowers. But before we go there, I'd like to go back to where we started and why we're doing this. So fast forward or rewind two years back to here. It's Zurich, Switzerland. And nestled between the gorgeous snow-covered peaks and the delicious Swiss cheese is a place called the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology, or ETH Zurich, where Matt and I were studying a combination of courses in robotics, computer vision, biomedical engineering. And we saw this guy. So what he's holding is not just a cane. It's actually a pretty complex technical device. Nestled in that handle is a 3D camera. And that camera is sensing obstacles in front of him and alerting him via tactile feedback and auditory sounds how far away obstacles are in front of him. So we saw that and we said, I wonder if we can do something more. And thus began a project we called Eevee. We packed the EV with a ton of technology. There's a 3D scanner, a camera, and a GPS module in there. The device is able to detect obstacles in front of the user. It's able to assist them in navigating to where they want to go. It's able to announce friends that are approaching to them. And it's also able to identify, uh, identify traffic signs in the area that are of relevance to the, to the user. <clears throat> now, the important part of this project was that we're able to use the brain of the user to do the processing on these signals. The images coming from the 3D scanner are translated into tactile feedback in the belt of the device. This tactile feedback varies in both, in both um, its, its placement on the user's stomach and its intensity. The user is able to use these, these new sensory signals to, to feel and to see their way around the world. Now, I noticed when people were using this device for longer periods of time, they began to forget that they had this belt around their waist. And instead, they began to see this new sensory input as almost a new form of sight. Now, we learned two key things in creating Eevee. One was that when you're designing a wearable electronic device, you don't want to create it to look like a giant diaper. <laughs> people just don't want to wear that. And the second is, as technology closely couples with us as humans, it becomes removed from the equation. And what you're left with is a new or an enhanced ability. As technology blurs closer to us, it, <clears throat> as technology blurs closer to us, it, it, becomes, it becomes a part of us or, or an extension of us. Now, after this experience, we asked ourselves another question. And that was, if we can restore some of the senses to the disabled, what can we do for the rest of society? So when the three of us graduated from university just over a year ago today, we set out to answer this question. And we quickly realized that the biggest challenge when using technology to augment our lives or give us new abilities is not the computing power, it's not the storage density, it's not the physical size, it's the interface and how we interact with it. And we realized that in order to, to, to build this technology, we need to build a new type of interface that's always available, and yet at the same time unobtrusive, that can let us connect 24-7 to our digital lives. And we use our hands, we've evolved to use our hands to interact with the physical world, so why not with the digital world as well? And this is not a new idea. People have been trying to do this for a long time. Uh, we've seen numerous gesture control systems, mostly camera-based, that try to interpret your actions and gestures while you're in the field of view of the camera. And you know, these are great if you're sitting on your living room couch or if you're working at your desk. But if we truly want to introduce a new, always available interface, it has to be something that both feels and acts as if it's a part of you. So a couple of years ago, while studying biomedical engineering and taking some courses in the area of kinesiology, I came across a technology that's called EMG, or electromyography. And that's just the big scientific way of saying the study of the electrical activity of muscles. And so this is used by kinesiologists to do things like study the movement patterns and activation patterns of the muscles in a sprinter, or by physicians to diagnose certain types of neuromuscular disorders. But we saw this as an opportunity to plug our hands into the digital world and ask the question, could we use those tiny electrical signals that result in the movements of our hands and our fingers to actually interact with the digital world? 
So we set out to build a prototype and see if we could do this. And this is what our first device looked like three months in. It was this big, hunky prototype with wires hanging everywhere, medical grade sensors that were literally stuck to our arm, and a USB cable tethering us to the computer behind us. But after a few months, finally it powered up. And what we were able to do is just by moving our hand to the left or to the right, we were able to manipulate some images and content on the computer. And so fast forward a year to today, we put together a team of engineers, scientists, and designers that have been working on this. And we'd love to give you a glimpse of where this has come since then. <laughs> so, in case you were wondering how I was just controlling the flight of that helicopter, I actually have a prototype of the Mayo on my arm right now. So, the Mayo is a device, it's an armband, you wear it on your forearm. And it detects the actions that you're doing in two ways. The first is through a set of eight custom designed electromyographic sensors, which are sensors that detect the electrical activity that gets generated when you contract your muscles. And in contrast to the technology as used in a clinical setting, our sensors do not require a direct electrical connection to your skin, which is important because it allows us to make the device robust for a wide variety of people and skin conditions. The Mayo also contains a nine axis motion sensor, which basically means that it can track the motion and orientation of your arm. Now we combine these two sets of data from these sensors together and run it through a bunch of machine learning algorithms which translate your gestures and motions into actions. And all of this processing is actually done on a low power microcontroller that's embedded within the Mayo itself. So only when an action is actually detected is something transmitted to the target device. Now, I'd like to give you a quick demonstration of our muscle sensing technology. So Matt over here is actually wearing another one of our prototypes. And as you can see on the screen, when he makes different actions with his hand, you see different patterns of signals appearing. And since he's making fairly distinct gestures here, it's the patterns that appear, it, it's easy to tell the difference between them just visually. But our algorithms can take this one step further by detecting much more subtle differences in these patterns and enabling us to detect a much wider variety of gestures. So this is the Mayo today. It's a new way to connect us and the digital world and put us in control. But what we're really excited about is for the future. It's the new possibilities an interface like this enables. And ultimately, it's the superpowers it could give us. Thank you very much.